One early August afternoon, a crowd gathered at Loma de Guayacanes. Rumours were circulating of an excavation that revealed finds of the so-called Taino, the indigenous inhabitants of the Caribbean islands. Buried treasures, gold, precious objects. There were a lot of expectations. For the research team of Nexus 1492, this was a great opportunity to engage with the local community and tell them about the work being undertaken. Members of the team presented the actual finds, post holes of round houses, cooking areas and material remains of the first islanders. There was quite some disbelief that the excavation revealed nothing else but, well, trash, a lot of old trash, but this is what archaeology is all about. The archaeological site is located in the Valverde region in the northwestern Dominican Republic. It is situated on the southern flanks of the Cordillera Septentrional, a 200 km long mountain range that separates the Cibao Valley from the coast. Just on the other side of the mountain range, Christopher Columbus landed on his second voyage. He had 16 ships and a crew of about 1,500 men. He was there to stay. In December 1493, he founded the first European settlement in the Americas and called it La Isabella. This was the beginning of the conquest of the New World. Nexus 1492 investigates the encounters between two worlds. It looks at how European colonisation impacted the lifeways and deathways of indigenous peoples of the Caribbean, how their cultures and societies were transformed, and how their legacies are still alive within today's multi-ethnic and multicultural Caribbean society. To beat the heat, excavations began in the early morning and continued with a short break until noon, and the team returned to the excavation house. Another stint ran from four till seven. The excavation revealed mainly broken pottery, shell and fauna litter and stone tools discarded by the people who had lived there between the 13th and 15th centuries. Each find was categorised, bagged and weighted. The diagnostic finds were photographed and documented. Sieving separated the finer material such as animal bones and charcoal from unusable dirt material. Sectioning and drawing the pit features and post holes provided an overview of the local stratigraphy. Sedimentation since the time of occupation had been very limited, so most units were dug only half a metre to one metre deep. Two buried adult individuals and an infant were found in mounds, very close to the habitation area, just outside the ring of post holes representing house structures. The skulls from the adult individuals were removed after deposition of the remains. The indigenous peoples dug into the slope of the hills to create platforms as a base for their houses. These platforms became clearly visible when the vegetation was removed. The mounds next to the houses not only served to bury the deceased, but also functioned as a garbage area, a place to cook and a location where the white chalky soil removed for creating the house platforms was deposited. Work continued in the afternoon at the excavation house, about two kilometres to the south, and consisted of washing and documenting the finds and preparing samples for further analysis in the laboratories. The house also served as a place to relax and recover from the heat of the day. So what does the settlement at El Flaco reveal? Columbus spoke of evidence of many indigenous villages situated alongside the mountain range. The village's location may have been strategically placed on a path through the mountains, with a good view over the valley. The excavations at El Flaco have revealed a village with house platforms and multifunctional mounds typical of this time period. Whether the inhabitants of this settlement or of neighbouring villages met with the European colonisers remains to be seen.